The next solution I actually want to talk about is called locks and keys. And the idea is the following. We have, again, a heap. We have our heap and we have our pointers. Now we have a lock and a key, right? And the way it works is the following. Here's our heap memory. Here's our pointers right here. This is A, this is B. And the, the way it works is the following. We have a, a lock, meaning if A wants to access the actual uh, heap memory, it has to know the key to the lock. And what that means is the following. A pointer is actually divided into two parts. The part that points to the lock and key, or whatever it is, and the actual key. Now, here we have the lock and the pointer toward, toward to the actual memory. Now, the way it works is the following. When A wants to access the memory, it checks to see, does the key equal the lock? If it does, well, it's not really A, it's actually the system behind. If A is holding the key to the lock, so it is allowed access to the heap memory. If for some reason A does not hold the key to the lock, it's not allowed access. Now, why, why, would, that, why would that happen? So let's see what, what would happen if we write B equals A. So we would actually copy the pointer, just like before, and we would copy the key. And if we try to access via B, so again, the question that would be asked, does B hold the key to the lock? If that, that is yes, which it actually does have right now, so they will be granted access. If the answer is no, it would not be granted access. Now let's just assume what happens. Let's see what happens if we delete A. Just like before, we're not gonna change the story. The story is still the same. Let's delete A. So when we delete A, so first of all, we disconnect that and we change the lock to some other random number. Now suppose B tries to access the, the actual memory. Now this, this like before, this could be uh, disconnected from the heap or connected to the heap, it doesn't make, really make a difference. But suppose, for example, that B tries to access the data again. So here again, we're gonna have a, the lock does not equal the key and it will not be granted access. Why not? If the key was some number X and we now change the key to some other random number Y, so X statistically would not be equal to Y, it's actually a random number. The chances of it equaling each other is one over two to the size of the key in bits, right? So it will not be granted access and therefore it would throw an exception. And we find ourselves again, knowing about the dangling point. Now, what would happen if we want to allocate the memory to somebody else, just like before? So here's C and C goes and it, 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 it randomly chooses a key. So it chooses a key, some other key, it's called a key B. This was key one, let's call this key two, and this was this was key one. And it goes and it puts into the lock the, the, the correct key. So this would write in it key two. And it would point to the heap. So then we have the picture that looks like that. Now, if C tries to access the memory, so the question will be asked, does key two equal key two, lock to whatever it is, and the answer to that is yes, right? Does the key equal the lock? The answer is yes, and it's allowed access. What would happen if B tries to do the same thing at this point in time? If B tries to do that, so we ask, does key one, which is what B is holding, does that equal what's in the lock, which is key two, or lock two, whatever you want to call it? And the answer, the answer to that is no, it does not equal, therefore it will not be granted access. So notice that this time around, we're actually reusing the locks and the keys. We are not memory leaking them. So it's true that there's more things going on, but we're not leaking anything. If C goes and, and C tries to, uh, let's say B, B disconnects, and again, we get something here random. And even, even if we reclaim the actual heap, let's reclaim the heap and we still keep the locks and the keys around, it's not leaked. Why is it not leaked? Because it could be reused again and again and again. Unlike the tombstone solution we had before, in which the tombstone itself was leaking and there was no way to actually reuse it. 
because anytime you reused it, you're actually granting access to somebody who shouldn't be getting it. Here, you can actually reuse the locks, the, the key mechanism, the lock and key mechanism, and you reuse the same lock and key you used before to actually point to some new heap memory. And it still would not grant access to some previous guy who should not be granted access. So it's true that the, that the lock itself cannot just be reclaimed by the memory because otherwise go nowhere B might, might find itself, but you can reuse the same lock and keys. So we're not leaking any memory here because um, we have the number of keys and locks that we actually have is actually proportional to the maximum amount of, of uh, dynamic, dynamically allocated memory at the same time. So you can still say it's some form of memory leak, but it's again, much, 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 much slower. And this is what's known as locks and keys, which is a, which is a system that was implemented by, by a certain version of Pascal called, uh, it was called U, uh, UW Pascal, that was the name of it. And it's actually uh, been implemented in reality, in, real, in, a real, in a real environment. And, and as I said, again, notice that we're trying to solve the problem of dangling pointers and we're more interested then in memory leaks. We are actually going and constantly minimizing the memory leaks, making it smaller and smaller and smaller, if at all, but we still have it on the books.